Hi, this is Evan here from latinum.org.uk and in this video I'm going to talk to you about um, a piece and I'm going to read it to you written by Benjamin uh, de Uge from his introduction to the uh, um, Willis Illustribus Romae of Lomond and he's talking about how to read Latin. Um, now you might think this is a ridiculous question. I mean nobody asks you how do you read French or how do you read German? So why is it that Latin teachers have to ask this question, or how do you read Latin? I mean, it seems like such a uh, stupid thing. Like you just read it, you know, you start reading, you start at the beginning and you read to the end. Well, funnily enough, most Latin students don't do that. Most teachers of Latin don't teach their students to do that. They take their Latin and they treat it like a giant piece of Lego and, oh, I don't like that bit there, that's yellow. Let's move it over here. And they reassemble the whole thing. So it's sort of like an English sort of order. And then they will try and understand what's going on. Well, no, Roman did that. Romans spoke to each other in Latin. And they processed the Latin at natural speed. Um, and that's how they did it. So, how to read Latin. As this is the first continuous reading, says Dude, talking about this particular book in Latin that many students using this book uh, will do, it is very important that the right method of reading be adopted from the outset. The right method. First, and most important, the text should be read and understood in the order in which it stands. Now, this is why I am an enormous advocate of audio Latin as a way of forcing you to deal with the text in the order in which the text is written. Because if you have an audio book and you're listening to the Latin, well, you have to process it in the order it's written in. And this forces you into the language. And if you want to command Latin, then you have to stop this hunting for the verb business, this relocization, this, this, this ridiculous exercise of treating Latin like it's some kind of wonderful mathematical puzzle. It ain't a mathematical puzzle, it's a language, a language that was spoken by washerwomen and by people that drove wagons and people that built walls and also people that sat in the forum. Everyone dealt with it. You know, you haven't got to be a genius to be good at this language. But if you don't process it in its natural order, you will never succeed. So, any rearrangement of the order of the words uh, and the thought destroys that apprehension, says de Uge, of Latin idiom and style, which should be most carefully cultivated. The Romans were very particular about the way they used their language. They it was a, it's a beautiful language. You can do all kinds of things with it that you can't do with English, for example. As each word is met, it should be disposed of as far as may be. If it should prove impossible to settle all the points definitely, then keep the mind expectant until the progress of a sentence settles that which was doubtful. That's how Romans did it. They were in suspense a lot of the time while they were listening and said, Aha! That's what he was saying. So, it's thus that the Romans read and understood their own language. And if we learn to do likewise, we would master it and then we would partake of it. We would get into the spirit of being like a Roman. Um, Professor W.G. Hale wrote a pamphlet, which you can find online, called The Art of Reading Latin. If you want to find it, type in The Art of Reading Latin and then type the word file type, colon, that's one dot above another, and then PDF and then you'll find the PDF of this. Um, and he gives a very clear exposition of this method in very great detail. Now, why did he have to write a whole pamphlet about how to read a language in its natural order? Because it wasn't being taught this way. It's still not being taught this way. And most students of Latin, quite frankly, can't read Latin. They can translate badly into English. They can recite bits of Latin. But the number that actually gets to the point where they can pick up something and read, and the voice inside their head is a Roman voice, not a little mouse scurrying around, hunting for the verb and translating rapidly into English. Now, very few students have that. If you want to have that, then you either need to read out loud to yourself extensively, forcing yourself through the text without stopping, or listening. There are two ways about it. It's very tiring to read out loud for long periods of time. Um, so if you listen to someone else who's gone to that trouble, then you save your voice and it's a lot easier. And you can also re-listen to a text many, many times. Sometimes the first time through, 
you don't quite get it. And the second time through, you sort of get it more. And the third time, it all suddenly falls into place. So reading at sight. No discipline is more useful for inspiring confidence in pupils than frequent practice of sight reading, to which I will add listening to Latin read aloud. Uh, when de Oudre was writing this, this wasn't really an option. Um, you know, but now it is. Much of the Willy Romae is particularly adapted to this purpose, and though no pages of the text have been specially set apart and annotated for it, still with much help the teacher, as may, teacher may deem necessary, almost any passage may be studied this way. Um, and then he talks about the translation of Latin. To read Latin is one thing. To translate Latin is another thing. And when most people say they read Latin, they don't read Latin. They can laboriously and very slowly translate Latin into their target language. So that ain't reading Latin. If I pick up a French book, a novel, for example, or a French newspaper, I just read it. Um, and that's how it should be. To read Latin is to get the thought without a conscious appeal to the English equivalent. That's what the Uj says, that you're getting into the mind of a Roman. The translator will be an interpreter. He will clothe this thought in English thought, which will be idiomatic English thought, and it will be as good as his command of English makes possible. So-called, says de Uj, literal translation has no place whatsoever in scholarly work. It can be useful as a first read-through um, to get the vocabulary under your belt. I have no objection to that, to, to listening to or reading very quickly through um, a interlinear text to make sure you know all the words, because it's quicker than hunting through a dictionary. So why waste time doing that? But once you've done that, move on. So, um, it is seldom that the Latin idiom, says de Uj, and the English idiom are so far identical as to make a literal translation tolerable. Students that are allowed to translate literally are in danger of doing more to ruin their English than they will ever gain from the study of Latin. On the contrary, there can be no doubt of the excellent training in the mother tongue that a good translation affords. Um, students should be asked at frequent intervals to hand in such translations. So he's got no problem with translation as a means of checking that the students understood. But your primary goal should be to read the text in the Latin. Um, pronouncing of Latin. Here's another issue. Students should be taught to carefully distinguish between the long and the short vowel sounds. Many students do not have their attention called to this point until they begin to scan verse, or not even until they get to university. And by then, of course, it's too late. You've got all these wrong pronunciations stuck in your head, and it's very hard to undo a wrong pronunciation. For one, to reform who has been careless in his Latin speech for many years is a most discouraging task. So it's very useful. Audiobooks read by someone who's paying close attention to the pronunciation of the Latin is a great way of making sure that you yourself get this automatic uh, gut knowledge of how Latin is pronounced, which vowels are long, which are short, how it all sounds. And then when you read a text that doesn't have any vowel marks on it, you can just read it and you'll know, oh, that's long, that's short, this is this word, that's this word. Um, and you won't get your malus confused with your malus, or your anus confused with your anus, which you do not want to do. Now, accuracy should be insisted on from the outset, and no faulty pronunciation should ever, ever, ever be heard in the classroom. Unfortunately, um, we're not in a world where most Latin teachers are good at pronouncing their Latin because they haven't been taught to focus on pronunciation. It takes a lot of effort and most people have spent their time hunting for verbs rather than hunting for long vowels. That's the way it is. Quantities may be learned gradually by marking them in all written work during the first and second years. Right? Also, if you say things out loud, then the quantity then becomes natural to you. And this will then ensure uh, care and accuracy as de Uge in the years to come without further formal instruction. During the second year of Latin, Latin should always be pronounced before translation. Um, and so he goes on. Um, anecdotes and striking passages should often be learned as a memory exercise and spoken before the class. 
Sometimes a teacher should read the review and the class translate with books closed. It's important that the ear should be trained and the eye should be trained. So doing both these things, listening to lots and lots of audio Latin. So I would advise you, if you are studying Latin by yourself, um, which many people are, it's not going to be enough for you to just use a book. You need to access the audio. Um, now, there are various ways of doing that. You can go online and look for various things on YouTube. But then the danger you have there is that not everyone is pronouncing their Latin well and carefully. Um, many people are making all kinds of, of errors. Um, there are a few people on YouTube who have very good pronunciation, but they're few and far between. Um, alternatively, you can go over to latinum.org.uk and listen to the audiobook catalog there, which is growing very, very fast and I'm constantly adding to it. I've just added um, Maud Reed's Julia. I'm working on this text that I'm talking about now, the, the Viris in Lustribus Urbis Romae, um, in De Uge's edition of that text. And there are other editions around. And this was, the original text is by Le Homond. Um, the Latin is of intermediate level, I would say, or upper intermediate level nowadays, because people don't spend so much time studying Latin um, at school. And so what was a first year level um, in 1800 is now going to be almost a third year level because the number of hours given to teach the subject has radically been reduced. Um, that's that. And uh, if you want to listen to this text, the Urbis Romae Viri in Lustres, you can find it at latinum.org.uk. Vale. Bye.